but how important it is to be on fire for God. You used to hear that term a lot, being on fire for God. Now, I don't think folks ought to go to a liberal church. Now, we're very careful when we go out on visitation. We've instructed our people to go out on visitation. We're not out there to take people out of the church. We're out there to witness to people who are lost. We're out there to tell people the gospel who haven't heard it. Or maybe they've heard it, but they need to hear it again. We're out there to witness to people about Jesus Christ. But, you know, people need to be in a Bible-believing church, a good Bible-believing church. It preaches the Bible and preaches salvation and preaches holiness and preaches standards and preaches the love of God to people. And it's not afraid to preach about sin. Listen, sin needs to be preached about. It's what the law is about. The law identifies sin so people know they're sinners so they will come to Christ. A, a, a church's job is to preach about sin so people know their law so they'll come to Christ and get saved and go to heaven. The evangelist told a story about holding revival services in a certain town. And he said in, in the services was a Christian man. He was a banker. And after one of the services he went home with him and his wife and for some fellowship and he said as they took him in their car they drove past a, a, a big church building and the man just looked over there and said there's, there's a large church building he said they evidently have a large congregation why don't you go to that church you have to drive past it on your way to the church you attend why don't you go to that church build, building the banker said pastor I go to church because I need my spiritual batteries filled he said the music and the, he said I've been to that church he said the music in that church is jazzed. The atmosphere is one of laughter. And the sermons are full of jokes. And he says, that's not the place where I receive the spiritual food that I need to, I need to, 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 to receive when I go to church. He said, when I go to church, I need my spiritual batteries. Now listen, people don't need to be in a liberal church that doesn't preach the Bible and doesn't preach the gospel. People need to be in a Bible-believing church that will preach the Word of God and where the power of the Holy Spirit is evident every time they come to church. The Lord told Isaiah, Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Spare not. Let me tell you something tonight. America is on its road and is marching lockstep to a new world government. If I know anything at all, we're losing freedom every day. Isaiah preached to these people so they could live. This was a free nation. These people, these people had been brought out of Egypt where they were slaves. God had brought them to the promised land. They lived by the most perfect constitution that has ever been written. They lived by the, the law of God. This was a free people. And Isaiah said, listen, if we don't repent, we're not going to be free. God's going to bring judgment. If we don't repent, we're going to be enslaved. We've already seen the hate crime bill passed. And, uh, and we know that that can be interpreted if a preacher uh, preaches or someone says something that someone misinterprets what he says, that uh, the possibility is there right now. And they didn't, uh, some, some of them didn't want that stipulation in there, but the possibility is there that he can be crying, he can be charged with a hate crime. That's a loss of freedom. Preachers ought to be allowed to stand in their pulpit and proclaim the word of God. And I'm going to tell you what. I don't want to get into politics tonight. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe that if they pass this, this government uh, health care bill, that freedom will be lost. Now let me give you a little secret. When the government gets into something, that's not all there is to it. You see, there might be some good people, uh, when there, when there, there might be some good people in the government at the time a bill is passed, and they might, they, might administer, they might administrate it in the right way, but down the road you get some bad people in. And let me tell you, there's always extra bills and other things that can come in that will change things. It never stops with just one thing. I wouldn't go into all that tonight. There's some global treaties that are coming. And all the information that I have 
those treaties are not going to be make America freer. They're going to cut America's freedom. Listen, America is marching lockstep into a world government. And folks, people need to wake up. There needs to be revival. People need to get back to church. Isaiah cried out to these people. He said, the Lord told him, he said, cry out, make a loud voice, speak distinctly so people can understand. They need to repent and get back to God. America needs revival tonight. Secondly, America will have to put, us, put sin away to remain a free country. Let me read verses 1 and 2 here. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Can you see your sins tonight? I think every one of us need to examine ourselves. I think every person... In, in church in America today. And every person, especially every person who calls themselves with the name Christian. And do you say that you're a Christian and you don't go to church on Sunday morning? Do you say that you're a Christian? You stay home and watch some ungodly television show on Sunday night? Do you say that you're a Christian and you don't actively work for the Lord? My friend, you need to examine your soul. Something's wrong somewhere. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. I've heard people criticize the church and they stop going. And they get their little group. And they get four or five people together. And they meet maybe on Sunday morning. And they say, well, that fulfills my responsibility. You notice Isaiah did not say go off in a little group here. Amen? Listen, that's what the devil is in the... The devil is in the, in the business of division. He wants to divide the church. He wants people to quit church. He wants people to go off in their own little groups. The devil wants division. God wants unity, spiritual unity. Not the ecumenical stuff. See, the problem today is that America is full of sin. You know, the Lord was not pleased with these people here in Israel who they believed these were people who were religious people. They believed in him. But there was there was there was many things that they were doing that God wasn't pleased with. Uh, people acted like they were pleasing the Lord. I, I talk to people today. I'm I'm not a judge. My goodness, folks. I talk to people today and I ask them, Are you, would you be ready if Jesus would come today? Yes, I would be. They, they might have just sworn under their breath at something. Let me tell you something. To be ready when Jesus Christ comes means that you truly save, you surrender your life to Him. You love the Lord and you're living for Him every day and you're doing your very best to follow Him and you put sin out of your life to the very best of the ability God will give you. And if you haven't done that, you're not ready when Jesus comes. Sin is not only in the world today. It's moved into the church. So many churches today don't have a Bible. Oh, I know. I preach to you about that a lot. I preach about this book, the King James Bible. And I know there's doctors with all kinds of degrees after the name. Well, so a poor old brother noise. He, he really don't know what he's talking about. Uh, if he did, you know, he would sanction these in, in modern versions. I saw I went, one fellow who went so far uh, was writing in a Sunday school book. Uh, and one fellow went so far as to say that, that people needed to give up the sin of believing the King James Bible. That's what's coming to you, see. But many churches, you see, they've given up the absolute, inerrant, infallible Word of God. They don't have a Bible anymore. 